Hello and welcome to Advertisers Watching Ads. My name is Tom Ollerton. I'm the founder of Automated Creative and this is a show where advertisers watch other advertisers' ads. The show's been cancelled. So-and-so did something ridiculous. I think they've perfected kind of the good formula to do it. I don't think they would be surprised by the stunty, yeah. over-the-top nature of it, which I love. Before we get to this week's creative, let's meet this week's guests. Hi there, everyone. Uh, my name is Melissa Nayarko. Until recently, I was a senior brand manager at Live Nation. Um, I'm currently a media and career consultant. Hi, I'm Lucy Say, and I'm the current head of social media and reputation for BNP Paribas retail banking division in Paris. And hi there, I'm Jason Hortus. Until recently, I was helping Kraft Heinz. Uh, marketing digital transformation initiative helping build martech and ad tech internally fantastic what a panel right let's see this week's quite weird creative introducing duolingo on ice the new multilingual musical coming to a city near you join duo the owl and all of his friends in a four-hour skate dancing extravaganza sing along with songs like spanish or vanish La duo et la dua. La duo et la dua pour la vie. C'est la destin, la destin. French or the trench? French or the trench, Dutch or the crunch. Japanese or Bucanese, this is how I'll eat you for lunch. Trick or your neck, you best protect the street. Now why you know you're praying the light in the street now? Choreographed by a two-time Emmy Award winner, Duolingo on Ice is a four-hour shocking spectacle with no intermission, so the fun never stops. Treat your family to the magic, the wonder, and the chilling performances of Duolingo on Ice where the tears of the innocent will please the owl for millennia to come. Find out why fans across the country are saying, everything's better on ice. It was slay. Where's my son? They took my son. Learning a language has never been this cool. Buy your tickets to Duolingo on Ice now at SeatGeek.com slash Duolingo. On a scale of one to five, how many votes would you give it out of five? So one, two, three. A four, a four, and a four. Right. Melissa, what is going on? I personally thought this was hilarious, but essentially this was an April Fool's ad campaign, of course, for Duolingo, which is a language learning app, if you will. It essentially was framed in the sense of, you know, the Disney on Ice commercials that we all remember from late 90s, early 2000s, and essentially played on that factor with the added brand integration with SeatGeek um, and also with Spotify. Obviously, it was hilarious as well. I didn't know it was an April Fool's joke. I actually, in the YouTube comments, someone said it. And I was like, oh, that makes sense. And then I actually went to the SeatGeek page. And if you click around to actually buy tickets, it says like a hilarious copy, like the show's been canceled. So-and-so did something ridiculous. And it was just perfect. If you click on the find tickets button. Yeah, I think for a while, for the people who actually click on the find tickets button, there were was actually a coupon for one month free of Duolingo. Oh, that's, that's brilliant. So that's, that's pretty clever, yeah. I think it was in the first weeks of the campaign. Why are they doing this? What's the brand play here? Duolingo is pretty, you know, a brand that is pretty well known for, you know, kind of leaning in trends and humor and listening to, you know, what consumers expect to, to see or consume on social channels. And they've always try to kind of push the envelope when it comes to other top concepts. So it's just like one other attempt, basically, at, at doing something that is, you know, funny and to engage, you know, uh, their consumers, their target consumers. For April Fool's, you know, it's it's always, you know, a, a risky and, you know, challenging moment for brands to do something, usually because there's always this, this thin line where it's hard to assess between, you know, not going far enough and it just becomes like dull and predictable and just going too far and get a backlash, basically. But for a brand like Duolingo, who's been used to, you know, doing those kind of stunts. I think they've perfected kind of the good formula 
to do it with, you know, the, the mascot and, you know, the, the jokes and the private jokes that they've created over time and that they've reused in the, in the advertising. So, yeah, I think it's, you know, uh, it's pretty well done from, from them, you know. In today's digital playing field, it's all about kind of doing the most outrageous, definitely wanting to go viral, creating your own moments rather than latching on to a moment. I really think it's, it's for a mix of users who are already engaged because those folks, of course, would know who the mascots are, for example. And then, of course, just to, to catch a new audience, maybe I saw this and, and thought it was funny and I show, you know, a friend of mine or send it to a coworker. Um, and then yeah. that word of mouth kind of spread uh, is exactly, you know, the aim here. It's really all about awareness and word of mouth and virality and keeping the brand top of mind. And from what I do know about Duolingo, although it might be weird, I believe they are the largest player and have the largest uh, market share when it comes to language apps. So maybe for them, that was exactly the brief. Get people talking about us, keep us top of mind when it comes to awareness. And April Fool's was a good opportunity for them. How would you be building on this? Where do you see room for improvement? First, I'll highlight what they did really well, which is, you know, kind of the diversity throughout the ad felt very organic and authentic. The use of humor was really fitting. And then, you know, carrying it through to the SeatGeek pop-up website and the, the Spotify playlist, I think was really brilliant, where I feel like there could have been room for improvement, perhaps in drawing something to new kind of acquisition and kind of making it like widening the audience a little bit to kind of draw new users in. I feel like this is very much based for a customer base that is already familiar with them, knows the mascot, knows the owl. Countries like France, where this app is not as visible, I think there could have been something kind of drawing them to want to now sign up and learn on this app, which I don't think that lands. I think that if you're already familiar with the brand and kind of know that they're a little bit, you know, more goofy and out there, this would make sense in your world. But I think if you're outside of that context, it might not land as well. The use of humor was right on, spot on. I'll be honest, my first thought was, hey, this is kind of weird. It kind of picked up and I chuckled a couple of times. And at the end, I saw the SeatGeek integration. I was like, oh, that's super interesting. Let me go check out what this means. And then it was actually the SeatGeek page that made me the most you know, oh, I really like this ad, what they did, like the, the content, the copy was really thoughtful. So uh, some way to kind of incorporate the, the SeatGeek more into the ad itself, because I feel like the closer was actually for me when I went to the other page, the mm -hmm. SeatGeek page, and that, you know, in a Most traditional amazing. marketing funnel, that that's the conversion page. Um, and I would maybe I wanted to see something in the ad itself. When you just see this campaign as a one shot, you know, sometimes you, you feel like you may be outside of the jokes, but at the same time, you know, if we see the, the globality of Duolingo's, you know, marketing and social media strategy, there's this kind of repetition between like stunts in a very short span of time, you know, between you, you exposed to this campaign and then maybe you open TikTok or the social media platform, you see their contents again. So it's, it's about, you know, the repetition and the expositions to other time to it other times of the year. So, as a brand manager, it, yeah. I think this is this is spot on. It's very authentic to yeah. them. I don't think anyone who knows the brand would look at this and be like, "This is off the mark." Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't think they would be surprised, kind of, by the stunty, um, yeah. over the top nature of it, which I love. Like, if <laughs> they found success with that, like continue to lean into that. Would you sign off this campaign in in its entirety in its current format? One, two, three. Brilliant. Guys, thank you so much and we will see you all next week. Yeah.